What is the future of the physical workspace? This is transformative. Hello again, and welcome back to Transformative, a coffee break podcast about transforming your workplace and making technology feel a little more human. Welcome back to the home office, bedroom, and I'm Sam Glover, and interviewing with me, as always, is Kayo Main. In this series, we're talking all about the productivity revolution. We're going to be breaking down what is required to build a physical and digital workspace for a modern workforce. And thank you very much for being on this series journey with us. This week, I wanted to ask a really big question that I was really interested in. Like, do we actually need an office at all? Over the last couple of years, so much has changed. And it's given all of us the opportunity to ask, how do I actually want to work? Here at Boxy, we've had we've discovered new ways to work, and we're all developing the, our own personal work from anywhere policy to encourage these different ways to be productive. Now we're coming out the other side, and the working world is opening it up again. This gives us a great time to pause and ask, how do we really actually want to work? So joining us around the virtual table to discuss this is Jamie Hinton, CEO of Razor, and Joe Horbury, the head of design at Building Interiors Group, who are the very architects that build our brand new York Central Work Hub. And uh, I know many of our boxers are very excited to return to it and use it in its full glory. But thank you very much for joining us on this incredible discussion with Jamie and Joe. So stick around to the end as Jamie and Joe throughout the podcast provide some really interesting insights into what the future of your office could look like. Remember, you can always find out more about the productivity revolution over on our website. So uh, go to boxy.com and check out all the 2021 trends that we're creating. And you can find out more about how you can transform your workplace. But for now, for now, let's just focus on the episode and rejoin the conversation with Joe and Jamie. Like when we were planning this and chatting about this, me and Kai, one of the one of the big questions that we really kind of like got us going was the there's like in COVID, everything's changed, and just the thought of the like thought of the way we work from home is quite it can be quite productive for certain things, and it made me start thinking: is the cubicle the thing of the past? Why would you want to go to a boring cubicle? Why would you set up an office with a boring cubicle, cubicle, cubicle kind of look when? The perfect cubicles at home, and is, is is you can design it yourself. It's perfect, kind of, or potentially, and and that's what like got me and Kai like talking about what the future like in like in maybe one year time, five years, ten years. What does the future of the majority of people's workplaces look like? Yeah, absolutely. So while we were talking this through, we kind of we got to this point. Where we wondered have you know, Silicon Valley companies and universities, which they've kind of modeled themselves from, had it right all along with campuses and 24-7 flexible access. And kind of on that line, if remote working has forced the workplace to become increasingly digital, then we were just wondering what the future of the physical office is and how that can support people in working at their best. So at that point, I think I'll... um, I've opened the floor up to, to the two of you. We're really excited to hear the two different angles that uh, you might come at this from. But mm. uh, Joe, Jamie, if anyone has any thoughts there, feel free to take it away. Um, well, from our point of view, I, I hope there's a physical workplace, otherwise we're all out of a job. <laughs> <laughs> However, one thing that's been really interesting in the last 12 months is how people initially nearly – Everybody loved working from home. They loved freedom. It, the sun was shining. It was springtime. People had been able to work in the gardens, and it was like fabulous. This is, a, you know, is this the new norm? This will be amazing. And then we quickly saw that people were getting in touch with companies saying, actually, can I come back into the office a couple of days a week, one day a week? I'm really missing um, that collaboration, that socialization with other people, just speaking to people. Um, you know, a lot of people live on their own, so they could literally not see anybody all week if they didn't leave the bedroom. 
So we've seen a real change, mm. a real shift, and it's been interesting watch that watching that pattern shift. Shift. So I think as as human beings, we need that socialization and interaction. There's very few of us that can live and work completely on his own and not you know not get that sort of um, a thrill from speaking to other people. Do you know it's actually a, a part of some torture that you'll actually be put in isolation? You can go insane with not having any interaction. And that, that's when you start yeah. talking to yourself. You've seen people shipwrecked. They actually, you know, we've seen it in the films where they turn a football mm. into someone else and you start <laughs> well, imagining <so>. things. <laughs> I think it's that, you know, we were saying, Joe, about um, evolution. In the four million years or whatever we've, we've been on this planet, we've evolved to be a tribal community. And who's to say that three months of being separated and having to work at home is going to change all those millions of years of evolution? They're just not. They're simply not. And that's why we're craving for it. The damage, I think, to some has been quite great. The collaboration, some space. I, I speak with the AMRC a lot, into, and it's all about the innovation. And what they've noticed is there's a huge drop in those anecdotal conversations, those over, oh, yeah, yeah, good in, good point, or just, just those serendipitous conversations that happen and that's really stemmed their innovation and we see it here as well there's nothing like it teams go we need yeah. to get together to finish this off because we're not being productive there's only so much you can do in your bedroom um and i think that there's a lot to be said about yeah. the context of where yeah. you work what joe what's your calling for when people say they want environment all right what do you see is like the most common trend in terms of what people are wanting is it like a a very trendy, cool, open plan. Do people want plants? What is it, do you think, that is the, the context that gives people a, a working environment? Very much going towards um, the agile working environment, so where you're not just tied to one desk all day, very much. Very very similar to what we've done with Boxy, with their office, where we give people different mm. environments to work in. So you can go grab a coffee at the bar and get a drink, you know, sit down on a... a comfy sofa and take your laptop there or you can go to the airspace and have a little mini meeting with three or four colleagues or you can go for, to one of the quiet areas the snug or the library for some real concentrated working away from the hustle and the bustle of the rest of the office so there's, there's loads of research of giving people different environments to work and actually increases productivity um you know the, the traditional desk will always be there because People work in a certain way, you know, they like working on a desk, but there's all giving people choices and different mm. environments. So, like I was saying, concentrated, quiet working, then more collaborative, open plan for big um, brainstorming sessions. You know, that's that seems to be the way that everything's going. It's something it's been around for a long time, but I think the pandemic has just made it. Um, it's brought, brought it to the front of people's minds now. I think there is a different way that we can work. This hybrid model of it used to be just working in the office or working from home, but now it's the last 12 months has proved that actually there's a bit of a hybrid. You can do a little bit of both. So how much do you think the context, like literally, you know when people go, they, they procrastinate and they have to clear the room because the desk is a clear mind space, you know, so it has to reflect how they're thinking. There has been a lot of research that shows that when people work in a library, for example, they are more intelligent, they do more analytical work because of the context, the environment they're in. What they see, they do. So there, there has been actual research in this, and it's, it's quite interesting. Have you seen any trends in terms of demand of real folk? Like there used to be the feng shui thing of oh, we'll put a door over there, you know, really thinking about how that works and the flow of energy through a building. Have, have you seen any trends of people? you know, wanting to know what the visual impact of the space that they're in has on the work that they do. Oh, yeah, definitely. There's There's been a lot of interest, I'd say, more probably in the last three years towards more biophilic design. You know, it's the old adage of bringing the outside in, but there's, again, a lot of research about if, as humans, because we come from nature, you know, the caveman lived out in in nature we were surrounded by it so innately we feel more positive and calm if we can see nature now that doesn't have to be hmm. we're all in a tree house it can be bringing foliage inside having there's certain colors as greens blues and yellows that trigger these um emotions 
So, yeah, there's been a big push towards that. And, and well-being, just people are speaking about that more than I've ever known before. You know, well-being in the workplace and giving your employees that, uh, uh, you know, th- thinking about their environment that you're putting them in. Um, a, it's big for retention of staff. If people are happy coming to work, they'll stay with you. They won't look for another job, um, you know, right down to looking after people's mental health. There is definitely, a, I'd say five or ten years ago, 99% of the briefs we got were, how many desks can you fit in this space? What's the absolute maximum number of people we can cram in? And that's really changed. We're not seeing that now. It's more, how can we make a, a more comfortable, nurturing environment? So, yeah, there's definitely a shift. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to predict the future, though, isn't it? Like, how where it's all going. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm also quite curious, Jamie, about the work that, that you do with Razor, because I know from looking through your website and looking at the case studies, people that you've worked with, um, a lot of your work has been about enabling people to form their best in kind of non-traditional locations as well. So I think I I read uh, a case study where you'd worked with uh, one of Virgin's uh, railway services, um, looking at the apps that people were using and helping to kind of optimize those and get the best. So I wondered from a kind of digital transformation and technology standpoint, what kind of conversations you'd been having with clients recently, what they've been after um, in terms of creating a, a digital workspace that helps them work at their best, if that's changed at all over the last few years? Recently, it's just accelerated all of the conversations. There's, there's this big realisation that you don't have to be in a certain place to work. Um, mm. Our work doesn't necessarily mean just, say, shifting the work, you know, the workstation out, like virtual desktops and all that sort of stuff. It's actually trying to change people's minds of what's possible. Now, mm-hmm. All of our work, and like just like boxes, all everything we do is about people first. I'm pretty sure when you, when you design an environment, where do you start? You don't start with, you know, if you're going to build a building, you don't start, well, I'm going to put a wall. You start, How do people want to use this space? What colors? You don't Absolutely, choose the color yeah. because it's cheap. Well, some people do. You choose it because it's the, the right one that people will respond in an appropriate way. And that's how we go about technology. Technology comes second to how a person works with it. What's really interesting is a lot of people go, we want to change, we want to change. And what happens is <laughs> if you don't start with people engage with them in all of these different aspects, how the, what does the future workspace look like? You know, how, if we're going to tell people, they usually go, no, I'm not interested. Even if they, they think they really might like it, if you tell them you're going to do this, they go, no, I'm not. I don't care, mate. It's like sorry, you speak with a child and go, you're going to do this. They go, no, no, I'm not, even if they really want to. But it's the way we speak with people. It's the way we actually suggest this change. And I'm a big believer with all of this, you know, with this pushback. We can change the way we speak with people. So if you think about when um, typists, so there were lots of typists, the old, the clacky clacky, and the whole rooms are full of clacky clacky um, keyboards being uh, written mainly by women. And they came in, they said, right, there's this new computer, electronic typewriter, it's going to change everything that you currently do. They were, no, nah, I don't want it. And that's literally happened. No, nope, don't want it. And people didn't want to adopt that change. Just like the physical workspace, if we forced people and said, you've got to come back into work, they probably wouldn't. You go, no, you don't want to. You can stay at home. No, we want to come back. We actually, no, we want to balance. <laughs> you know, I think, if you say like with the typist, you, you change the way you say this is going to make what you do now the same, but just a lot faster, a lot better. The message is basically the same because it's going to change everything you do, but we've changed the way it's adopted. The ego doesn't say, no, I'm not interested. And because the, when mm. the ego says, no, I don't like it, it's very hard for it to change. So that's, that's where I think is the, the biggest key is that people are understanding that we actually have to appreciate people as human beings and what's gone on to actually change the message we give to them so that they'll actually adopt this quicker, faster and better. You're absolutely right, Jamie. One of the first things that we do when we when we sort of engage with a company is we either undertake some workplace consultancy ourselves where we get to speak to all the team heads or whoever the key people are that we need to speak to to find out how they need the space to work for them. Because what the top management might think they need, somebody not literally the shop floor, but some, somebody who works within that environment may have a completely different view of what they need, how they need the space to work with them, how they need to interact with 
the neighborhood next door or whatever. So that's something that we sort of always try to do with any company that we're going around. What's the journey? How do we, you know, how do we make this place the best for your people? Um, and it's, it's it's where it all starts because if you if you've got especially if you've got a large staff if you don't take them along with you you're just going to get pushed back all the way so it's especially when you're adopting new practices like but you know um, activity based working so yeah you're dead right excellent and now like I say because we're close to close to time on this one I just wanted to just ask one final one final thought then with everything that's that's been said now like how with the the space being a very people orientated place what does where does the digital workspace fit into that kind of, into, into that and how does like technology as a whole kind of work into that people focused future of the office in my from my perspective it's all about augmenting that space yeah it's it's about augmenting that space and actually ex, it's almost like an extension a digital extension there's, at the minute, we have big screens that bring people into the room and cameras that follow and little um, tablets on the top of uh, wheel devices that follow you around. Um, we have robots that bring, you know, almost bring that together. I think there's the future, the absolute where we're going in the future is things like the HoloLens, augmented reality and virtual reality. That brings you, that immerses you even more. There's still nothing like actually being in the room, but when you can't or when you need to, for me, they're, they're the technology that's going to enable it. It's going to be really blended and almost like an extension to the real world. And that, that yeah. for me, is getting really exciting. That's that's where the magic's going to happen. Excellent. Oh, fantastic. It's been interesting seeing the sort of AV kit that's gone into your office in York because um, it's kind of a different level of what we, we generally see put in. So it's been really interesting to see how the tech is making helping the space work and making the space work. I think we've all, you know, I, I'd never you been on a mm. Teams meeting before the pandemic ever. We did everything in person. Mm. Um, <laughs> and whilst I still think yeah. if you're doing a presentation, I still think it's in person. Um, you know, we, we've learned we can. Mm. So yeah, I think that's. We've learned we all have to be TV presenters. That's what we've learned. <laughs> yeah, we've had so to go true. from ten times in front of someone to a hundred times on a screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely okay. yeah so the future is everyone needs to employ their own personal ant and deck i like i like that thought to end on that's so thank you very much jb and joe oh, so that is all for today thank you very much to jamie and joe and for you for joining us on the pod so if you enjoyed this episode don't forget to subscribe to boxy transformative wherever you get your podcasts and also on YouTube, or on the Boxy TV channel. Please stay tuned for a lot more exciting, incredible content we're planning. And next time on Transformative, we're going to sit down with the CEO of Boxy, Phil Doy. And we're going to ask him, can you be too productive? I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>